venerable priests belonging to all religions, friends. In the last month, I have traveled to almost every electorate and spoken to many of you. Nearly 125 rallies and many forums later, it is clear to me that this election is not only about changing the country, but it is about changing the character of our politics. Everywhere I went, in every corner of the country, I met women and young people who asked me, what do I have to offer? Will there be more jobs for us? Will there be more opportunities for our families to grow? But one question that was asked over and over was, how do we know that this time there will be change? What is the guarantee that we won't be let down by 225 MPs again? In being asked that question many times, it was clear to me that there is only one way that Sri Lanka's problems can be fixed, and that is to clean up politics in this country, while not, however, sacrificing our cherished democracy and individual freedoms. Just any candidate with just any policy cannot fix Sri Lanka's problems. More schemes, more money, more promises and more committees will not solve Sri Lanka's problems. To change this country, we have to clean up politics. We have to change who holds power and how they hold and exercise power in this country. While Sri Lankan citizens are on the brink of losing hope, stranded in a stagnant economy, and their livelihoods threatened by climate change, the old politics continues while a dangerous new undemocratic or anti-democratic political option has arisen. No minister, NGO or opposition can change this. It is up to you. On November 16th, go to the polling booth, no matter what, and give Sri Lanka a fighting chance. Your vote is what will end the old politics in this country and usher in a new socially sensitive and citizen-centric politics. Sri Lanka needs a clean-up and my mission is to get the job done. Every aspect of the political culture has to be transformed for Sri Lanka to move forward, starting with how campaigns are funded and how media agendas influence the political narrative and what is more dangerous, social polarization and civic conflict. Sri Lankan politics need to be more transparent, open and welcoming to talented professionals who can bring the change we are seeking. But above all, it must be citizen-centric. The old politics must go, corruption must go, cronyism must go, nepotism must go, greed must go, and the politics of privilege must go. One of the most serious ills of this country is the greed of the powerful to hold more power. In the past, we Sri Lankans were asked to unite for peace, for equality, and for prosperity. But today, I'm asking that we unite, not for peace, but to fight the greatest evil of our times, and that is injustice and greed. The injustice and greed that are tearing this country apart. Whether you are a Buddhist, Christian, Muslim or Hindu, our enemy is a common enemy. That is a fusion of injustice and greed. Injustice towards the many and the greed of a few in this country are costing millions their dreams and a chance for a better life. The Buddha said that whether a nation is just and good depends on the conduct of the rulers. When the ruler of a country is just and good, the ministers become just and good. When the ministers are just and good, the higher officials become just and good. When the higher officials become just and good, the rank and file become just and good. And when the rank and file become just and good, the people become just and good. It is said that even rains come in due season when the rulers are just and good. No change is possible in this country unless we make our leaders fully accountable we have to stop attacking the rank and file who are merely following orders from the higher up and make the leaders responsible. To that end, I would like to share with the nation my zero tolerance approach to rooting out social injustice and greed. If elected president, I will ensure 
that no minister will be allowed to hold positions where there is a conflict of interest. No minister will be allowed to appoint family members to positions of power. All government ministers will be required to publish online asset declarations. A central database of asset, liability and interest disclosures under the Bribery Commission will be set up. Corrupt politicians will be dealt with the same way drug dealers and abusers of women and children will be dealt with swiftly and sternly within the law and with new laws if necessary. I will withdraw luxury duty-free vehicle permits for all 225 MPs and put an end to VIP culture in Sri Lanka. It is time to go beyond conventional party politics, dirty politics, the politics of deals, of entitlement and greed and to set an agenda of positive development for Sri Lanka. To assure you that I will achieve what I have set out to do, I want to clarify the conditions I have set for my candidacy with you, so I don't leave any doubt in anyone's mind about my intention to change the politics in this country. First, Sri Lanka will have a new first-time Prime Minister who will be endorsed by the majority. Second, no person who is accused for aiding corruption or directly involved in corruption will be given a ministerial position. Third, nationalist ministerial positions will be filled by qualified professionals and a percentage of that will be reserved for women to ensure gender and generational balance. Last, no qualitative or macro change in the constitution will be made without broad national and social deliberation and a referendum I would like to end by thanking the people who took the time to listen to what I had to say in the last month. I will repay your trust a hundred times over. Let's get rid of the old politics. Let's deepen our democracy, not sacrifice it. Let's root out social injustice and greed and take Sri Lanka forward together. Thiruvan Saranai, Vanakkam, Assalamu Alaikum, Devi Pihitai.